Well, Bishop Martin has announced today that Richard Worsfold will be the new Archdeacon of Leicester. So why don't we meet Richard and find out a little bit about his hopes, uh, some of his prayers, some of his thoughts as he prepares to take on this significant role in the life of our diocese. Well, I think there's a great deal of freedom for creativity and initiative at the moment in the diocese, and that's very exciting. There's a great needs in all our communities, rural and urban, um, for uh, which churches are stepping up and at the forefront of, of, of meeting. Certainly where I am here in the city, I've just seen so much uh, response to that need with um, different forms of lunch clubs and gatherings and coffee clubs that are seeking to address issues of isolation, um, those who are seeking to support those with dementia, uh, the reaching out to the homeless through projects where people have given money for houses and uh, to try and enable people to move on in, uh, in, in living towards independent living, uh, support for those people with debt uh, issues. Um, there's so much where Christians I see in local churches are at the forefront of enabling so much good that is happening and that's, and that's exciting to see that creativity and similarly the creativity you see um, in uh, finding new ways of being church at the same time and obviously we have the established ways of being church that have served us for centuries and will continue to serve us but also we have the new ways of being church and just uh, recently we're seeing a church that's being formally licensed that's working in a school, a church school and which has been building a partnership with that school uh, seeing congregations where they are challenged whether they will respond to God's call to go out and to uh, respond to a, 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 a request for help from another church that is struggling and to go into that church and to re-energize it and to revitalize it um, as part of the resourcing church initiative um, seeing uh, new ways of gathering people uh, from different subcultures whether it be the younger people through some of the new missional communities that are emerging um, or whether it be all age contexts of messy church and that there's just so much new uh, that's happening it's really exciting. Um, I think about the, the challenge for us to continue to trust in God's plans for us as a church in the context of uh, where the, the church in its place in society is so different from what it was 50 years ago uh, or even 10 years ago for that matter. Um, and that can make us feel a little bit like um, being shaped by God may feel a little bit more like uh, being pruned by God, or, 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 or perhaps um, it's appropriate, being humbled uh, by God. Um, our place within society is different. And I think actually, you know, strangely, and it's almost laughable sometimes when I think about it, when I think about myself, um, that God has actually chosen the church to be the instrument of bringing about the commission to make disciples of all nations. Um, and um, that's God's plan. Um, we are a part of it. I'm not aware of there being a plan B. Um, and so I think there's a sense in which holding uh, to that and trusting in that, that, that plan of God uh, for us, even when there is so much that is changing around us. I think that's the first, first challenge I think of. But obviously second, there's the one to which in a sense you alluded to, um, the very variety of the forms of uh, worshipping and gathering together as church that we now have, both those that are inherited and established and those new that are emerging might make it seem that in a way we're not all in it together, we're actually doing all kinds of different things. And we've got a vision that is shaped by God which is about the kingdom vision which goes beyond our individual forms of gathering, it goes beyond the church for that matter. Um, but um, alongside that, I think there is a challenge of just how do we see ourselves as being in it together? Um, and actually we do need each other. If you imagine someone who's now two years old and you think about their whole lifespan, it might be that through this journey of life they make, they find themselves in all kinds of different forms of church, from fresh expressions. They may find themselves in their 60s being a church warden in a rural parish. That's the journey that people are on and we are here to try and provide all means by which they can engage with church and grow as disciples and discover what God's calling them to do in loving service for him.
First of all, I guess uh, for those um, who might at the moment be preparing to be licensed as lay ministers at the Call Together service in October, or those who've just been ordained uh, this past week or so, uh, like them, I guess, there is that sense, you know, God, are you serious? Um, me? Um, and, and really perhaps praying that I will trust in God's plans, um, trust in the God who knows me better than I know myself, and trust in the Holy Spirit who will equip me with those parts that, frankly, I think I can't do to meet so many different traditions of church and so many different ways of being church and relating to the people involved in all of those. And I think the calling is the same. It is to serve with all my heart and perhaps praying that I'll keep hold of that uh, in all that I do and to keep it as simple as that wherever possible. <laughs>